Hey everybody, it is Wintermute here, and I haven't done any other video on my channel in a while aside from anything related to Crimson Tide. And uh, I've just been busy, you know, my, my health has been kind of doing this number, so uh, that's we're, we're back in an upswing and we're trying new things to make sure that that kind of stays that way. Um, but, uh, so I'm taking a break from the game and I'm going to do an opinion piece on something. So I, I'm, a, I'm a late comer to this. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, shows that are written for, for kids or young adults, but are end up being way more much better and mature than, than, than they have any right to be. You know, um, uh, Star vs. the Forces of, uh, of, of Evil, uh, the, the, the new She-Ra, the original She-Ra even, um, you know, shows like that, that you're just kind of, you just watch and you're kind of like, oh, oh my God, this is, a, Avatar The Last Airbender is a, one of the best examples. Um, Legend of Korra, I was a, I was probably a bigger fan of that than I, I understand that criticism though. So, I, I, I but I'm a latecomer to Steven Universe and I just started watching the show maybe two months ago and I'll be honest, when I, when I started watching it, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know if this is my thing. Steven was just a bit too childish to start with. And I'm kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a little, even I think it's a little weird. And, uh, but it, it started to grow on me. And as the show kind of went on, I kind of went, oh my God, I, I get why the show is so popular. So in terms of review, the review is going to be very short. And then I'm going to go off on a, on a rant. And I'm just warning you now, I'm not going to pull any punches. Okay, because there, there, there was a, uh, well, okay, the show itself. The show itself is fantastic. It's definitely not going to be everybody's cup of tea, even though it is absolutely a great show. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's such a great show that, that I'm actually re-watching it now. And now that I've seen the whole series, now I have not seen the movie or, or Steven, uh, Steven Universe Future yet. But, you know, so I've watched the whole series and I'm, I'm going back and I'm re-watching it and... Now that I know where the plot goes, I, I'm, I'm watching some of these early interactions between these characters and, and going, wow, that statement has way more weight now that I know the, 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 the history with, between those two characters. Episode two, there's an episode where, where Pearl and Greg, Stephen's father, and then Pearl being his kind of big sister or aunt, however you want to look at it. Um, you know, she says some things about Greg and then she says some things about how, wow, she had, Rose actually did trust him with that or he, he, he did have it. And it's like, once you watch the series, you go back and you watch it and it goes, oh man, whoops, you, you really begin to appreciate all, you know, how you, you're watching, it's like watching it again almost for the first, not for the first time, but you're watching it again with a new appreciation because you understand how deep these characters go and, and the history between them and, and why they are the way they are towards them because there's there's a lot of baggage with that with that one scene that you didn't know when you first watched it so the show is great and it deals with so many great themes in a real mature way um you know uh unrequited love um stranger in a strange land uh growing up in the shadow of a famous parent coming to terms with whether that the that parent was really who you thought they were versus the myths that surround them, um, you know, uh, uh, identifying and ending the cycle of violence. That that's that that was one that really kind of caught me. But that that was a, that was that was a theme of of the show, and that one didn't become readily apparent until much later and I kind of and, and you kind of realize what some of the villains motivations are and you're kind of like oh ye. you know and of course Steven is end endlessly optimistic so to him you know one of the themes that they constantly cover with him is is showing kindness and compassion to your enemy even if they are vile and beyond redemption and what does that say about you and so, so it's a, it's a great show that deals with a lot of themes in a lot of different ways. Uh, and, and one of the things that, that I went, I went into it deliberately not watch, not reading up on it. So I didn't know anything else about it. I wanted to take it as it is coming, coming at me kind of fresh. 
Um, and, and I'm glad I did. I'm really glad I did because I have a completely different idea about who the crystal gems are when I first start watching it. And then once certain revelations come out and it completely flipped my perception on its head. I literally went into it and after the first couple episodes, I'm like, okay, so the crystal gems are like, like a, like cosmic superheroes that get kind of assigned to different sectors of the universe, uh, to help protect planets. Is that what's going on? Okay, cool. I, 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 I guess I kind of get that because they deliberately don't give you the entire story of what's going on. And I like that. That was a good thing. So boy, was I wrong. Wow. But you know, it's great to experience those revelations and kind of go, wow, this is way deeper than I thought uh, and way more messed up than I thought. And there's a lot more baggage going on here and there's a lot more backstory going on here. So ultimately, yes, Steven Universe is an excellent, excellent watch. I, lo I thoroughly loved it. I can't wait to, to sit down and experience it more thoroughly with my kids. Um, uh, because, because it's, pre it presents things in a way that depending on the maturity level of your kid, just like the last airbender and, and, and She-Ra and shows like that, they're, they're going to present these deep themes, but the kids can kind of watch it on this level. Well, if they were to go back and watch it in a couple years, now that they're older and more mature, they're going to appreciate a whole new level. And then again, a whole new level. And then again, a whole new level. And even as an adult, you may watch it through the first time and kind of go, okay, I really enjoyed this. And then you watch it again and you're kind of like, wow, you start to pick up some things you missed and how deep and meaningful some of these conversations, you know, what, what passes just banter between two characters takes on a whole new meaning once you, once you learn the backstory. So yeah, thumbs up. I don't really have a rating system, 10 fingers up. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to tackle a controversy that surrounded Steven Universe and neither side of this argument is going to be happy with me. Neither side. And, and I'm, I'm warning you right now. So we'll jump right in. And, and I, I kind of recall there being a controversy about Steven Universe. So uh, as I was watching, wait, wasn't there some, some hubbub about this? So I, I googled Steven, um, Steven Universe controversy and it's like, oh, apparently it has a, a same-sex wedding. Of course, that has to be a fucking controversy. In and of itself, I'm like, oh, gee. I just rolled my eyes and went, okay, somewhere in the show there's going to be a same-sex wedding. Now I had no idea what to expect. And I'm kind of like, okay, well, is it going to be those two characters? Is, is one of these characters going to come out as, uh, as being, being uh, uh, gay or something? I mean, I, I don't really didn't, I didn't read too much into it, so I didn't know what to expect. So then as the episode progress, or as I get closer and closer, I, I kind of start to see, oh, okay, I think they're moving towards that with these characters. Well, I was wrong. And then it moves a little bit further and it starts to move towards that with th these characters. And I'm kind of like, wait a minute. They're not going where I think they are, are they? they that, this can't be right. Because the controversy was about a gay wedding or, or a same-sex wedding, excuse me, same-sex same wedding. But those characters don't have a gender. Uh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, hold on, hold on. So I just kept watching and I'm kind of like, and then, and then it happened. The episode happened. And I kind of, I'm watching it and I'm kind of like, I don't understand what just happened. I, mean, I do understand what just happened, but that wasn't a same sex wedding. Did, did I miss something in the show? Is there some vital piece of information that I'm not aware of? But that's not a same-sex wedding. Because sex implies gender. Okay? Spoilers. So if you really, and I really, 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 really think you should watch the show, if you, you know, but if you're already familiar with it, continue. Because it, it's a very dramatic kind of thing. Um, but, so... Let me, let me back up a little bit. If, if you're still watching and you don't care about spoilers, gems. Gems are an alien race. And they are beings made up of pure energy. And they basically, their bodies are surrounding the gem that encompass, that, that actually houses their consciousness is a holographic projection with mass. So basically, they literally can take on any form they want. 
They don't have genders. This is an established fact within the show. Now, most gems, pretty much all the gems you see in the show are, uh, are, are predominantly present as female. And everybody that, uh, most people who interact with them on the human end of things refer to them as, as uh, you know, her and she and, and a woman. And the gems don't seem to care. The gems don't care. It just doesn't matter to them because they don't have a concept of gender. Um, a point which is, is very, very strongly illustrated at a couple points throughout the show that the gems don't understand gender they, don't, they, bar they barely understand the concept of change, let alone gender. Because a lot of the, the gems from Homeworld who start interacting with Steven and the Crystal Gems, so they see Steven and they go, it's Rose. And Steven's like, no, I'm Steven. And they're like, whatever, Rose. And they literally cannot understand that that is not his mother. Because his mother gave up her physical form to, to merge somehow and take some essence away from her, uh, 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 Stephen's father and create and reform herself as Stephen because she wanted to be reborn as a human gem child because she wanted to experience life in a new way. She no longer really exists as we know her. Her essence is now Steven. Steven has her gem embedded in his body. That's part of who he is. But the crystal gems can, or I'm sorry, not the crystal gems, the gems from Homeworld cannot understand this concept. And they constantly refer to him as Rose, which is his mother's name. And again, Greg, his human father, saw Rose interacted with her as if she was a female because she presents as a woman and fell in love with her. But the gems themselves don't have concept, a concept of gender. And they go, they go to great extremes for Rose to show how hard it is for Rose using flashbacks to even understand what a child is. She literally lived on this planet for like 5,000 years. And it isn't until her relationship with Greg that she really begins to understand what a human child is. This is how alien the gems are in, the, in some of their core thinking. And it's easy to forget that because they're, they, they, you know, they, they act like humans for the most part who have been on the planet for a while. Yeah, they're still alien. But, you know, but they say and do things, but their, their core processing is still very foreign. And they even show scenes where when, after Stephen is born, they're talking to Stephen while he's a baby. And they're like, Rose, where are you? Why don't you just retake your form? Okay, these are, these are the same people. These are people who understood what Rose was doing, but still cannot comprehend what happened. This is such a difficult concept for them to understand. Gender is, is not a thing for them. They, they are literally genderless energy beings. So you kind of need gender to have a same sex wedding, right? Yeah. So let's point fingers. We're going to point fingers and believe me, fingers are going to get pointed both ways. So wait for it. So the, the, the far right hyper religious uh, 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 fascist, fascist, um, uh, ultra conservative morons look at this show and immediately start screaming their head off saying it's a same sex wedding. Joke's on you, buddy. Joke's on you. Uh, and I'm laughing my ass off going, this is not a same sex wedding. And, and, and it take, they take it a step further. Um, because, because the two, the two people getting married are gems and, and, and again, big spoilers here, um, a revelation happens and you, you find out that one of the main characters is actually two gems that have, have, you know, stay in a state of permanent, uh, fusion, which is a big deal for, for the, the crystal gems and a revelation shocks, shakes the relationship to the core and they, they separate and they become their own beings again. 
Okay, they break, uh, you know, uh, Garnet breaks back into Sapphire and Ruby. And Sapphire and Ruby kind of go off on their own and have to do some real soul searching and kind of ask themselves, what do I want as an individual? What do I want? And not just what we want, because we don't know whether we're gonna get back together again as Garnet. And <laughs> they ultimately, separate of each other, decide they do want to rejoin as Garnet. And they do want to re, re, uh, be, come together again as, 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 as Garnet. And, and Stephen is the one who suggests, in a roundabout way, why don't you have a wedding? So Ruby goes and proposes to Sapphire, um, you know, and, and they have a wedding. And the wedding is not at all a traditional wedding that uh, the, the, the religious right loves to, to say they own. They own weddings. Remember that. They own marriage. The religious right, no matter what religion it is, it doesn't matter what religion it is, the religious right, no matter where you're from in the world, thinks that they own the concept of weddings. Um, of course, that's ridiculous. And so, what they, so it, Stephen's suggestion makes perfect sense. Because a, a wedding is, is, a, is, is a very traditional way of showing a joining of two people. In this case, two gems are going to refuse to create garnet, and they're going to merge their, you know, totally merge their personalities and their 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 energy to to create garnet, and garnet is going to come back. And so a wedding makes perfect sense. <laughs> you know, I was even explaining this to a, a friend of mine who who is a, a conservative uh, churchgoer, and said, "Yeah, that makes sense to me. A wedding makes sense. What you have is you have aliens on the planet Earth who are genderless." but they can still know love and they can still know a bond between each other. And so a earth, uh, somebody who was born here on earth and who, who is half human suggests, hey, you guys are gonna re refuse together. There's a, there's, a, there's a traditional ceremony we have here on earth that might really fit this. Okay, we call it a wedding or a, mar a marriage. And so he suggests that completely innocently and it makes sense. It is the most proper ceremony if you want to cer if you want to have a ceremony. And I think these characters kind of needed that ceremony to kind of profess their desire to be with each other again. Uh, and it really was a wonderful thing. And to further further complicate things and further mess things up, um, the the ruby it usually wears traditional kind of like quasi military, very practical quasi military garb. And Sapphire is, more, is the, uh, the upper class, uh, usually wears what, we would, what humans would consider a traditional dress. That's just the way they dress. It just happens to parallel what we would have here on Earth. That's it. But, so at first glance, you know, Ruby, the, the more uh, 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 militaristic soldier type versus Sapphire, the upper, upper class aristocrat, you know, well, obviously we know who the, who the woman is. Yeah, during the ceremony, Sapphire is the one who wears the tuxedo and uh, Ruby is the one who wears the traditional wedding dress. Well, kind of traditional wedding dress. I thought that was fantastic because again, it's, it's, another, represent it's another way of showing, quite frankly, gender roles don't mean jack to a species without gender. Not at all. It doesn't matter to them at all. They, let, they don't even understand gender, let, us, let alone gender roles. Okay. Now, some of the crystal gems sort of have, have you know, they have a better understanding because Steven gets a crush on, on uh, uh, Connie and, you know, she, there's, there's, uh, and, and the crystal gems are kind of like, oh, yeah, this is what humans do, right? Right. This is what they do, humans. So, yeah, good for you, Steven. You, you're kind of human. But you're still a gem, so we got to treat you like a gem sometimes because, you know, we, we're protecting the planet. So this entire controversy is a non-starter to me. And, and it's weird because I, I, I found that there's a lot of uh, uh, gay and queer websites that, that are touting this as the first same-sex wedding. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, feel, that's, I don't feel it's the same-gender same wedding. I really do not feel that way. 
gems only present as women and female by human standards. If they were to land on another planet with another species, how would they perceive them? I mean, really, and, and this is a very, I'm, I'm saying this very seriously. This isn't, this isn't rhetorical. I'm not, you know, I, I'm putting this, this notion out there that, that the people who are looking at this misunderstand because they are so locked into their gender perceptions. And so really, I think a lot of those, those uh, gay websites are, are wrong. Now, I understand the creator of this show, Rebecca Sugar, is a, a non-binary non and she considers herself bisexual. And she wanted to create this show uh, in part to have some of the main characters kind of very similar to her and what, what her experience was. Good for you. Because quite frankly, you know, a lot, I hear a lot of people complain about shows like this and she wrote, oh, they're, they're woke and, and they're pushing the agenda, the message and all this other stuff. It's like, no, they're good stories that happen to deal with themes that you don't like and you can't handle. That's, that's the bottom line. But as I was Googling, I came across an article by a, a, a prominent feminist magazine or webazine, whatever you want to call it, that, that explained that the main reason why Steven Universe is feminist is because all of his mentors are women. Pearl, Amethyst, and Garnet. You already know what I'm going to say, right? Because I've already said it. But now I, need, now I need to say the exact same thing to the other extreme. You're wrong. You are quantifiably, factually wrong. That is not true. Most of it, the, the, the three primary mentors that Steven has in the show are basically, are, are the other crystal gems, you know, uh, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, who are kind of like big sisters. In a lot of ways, you could also look at them like aunts or something like that. But but most people generally refer to them as like big sisters, and and that that fits that fits with the, with the relationship. That they're still his caretaker at this point in his life. They're those three are his caretakers at this point in his life. The other major uh, mentor in his life is his dad, who acts kind of like a father because he's his father. A very traditional father in, in, in most regards. They have a very traditional father-son relationship during the show. Um, so really his mentors are his, his father and three energy-based life forms that uh, are here, stuck here on uh, aliens that are, are on Earth. Uh, to say that his mentors are women is a bold-faced lie. Quite frankly, crystal gems could look like a potato with arms and legs. They can literally look like anything. But when they got here, they already had a society whose overall forms, generally speaking, were more in line with our perceptions of what a female would be, a more, more feminine, more female kind of figure. That's it. That's all it is. That's all it is. And we associate them with being women so we tend to, because of their their outer looks and we we, we call them female and and her and and they're they're cool with it because it's like what difference does it make to us it, literally we don't have genders what difference does it make to us um so to say that this show is feminist for that reason is a hijacking i believe of what the show was really trying to say now, Rebecca Sugar has, has been, and I haven't found an interview where she immediately identifies herself as a feminist. Now, she does identify herself, like I said, she is, she is non-binary, she's bisexual, she's, you know, a couple different things like that. And, uh, and she wanted to make a show with characters who are non-binary like her. However, and there are, there are a lot of characters who are non-binary within the show because that's what gems are. They are non-binary. But remember, Steven is not non-binary. He is, in fact, a male by human standards with all the good and bad that comes with that. And he does, in fact, fall in love with a, a, a human woman, girl, Connie. And they do have a relationship because that is where his heart lies. Okay? So... <laughs> The right and the left just, just completely fuck this up. 
I mean, to the point where, and, and that last article I was talking about, where, oh yeah, well he was, all his primary uh, figures are women. It's like, you, did you watch the show? And I really, I really would like to find the person that, that read this article, or wrote this article, like, did you watch the show? You did. When did you watch the show? Before or after you wrote that article? Because there was never, I, and, and again, I, I went into to the, watching the show without doing a lot of research. And as the show went on, I realized I don't want to look anything up. Because I don't want to spoil anything. Because I've, I've ran into that before. But there was never any doubt in my mind that the gems do not have gender. And they do not understand, they, they really struggle to understand gender. And gender roles hardly even show up on their radar as a thing. So this is a hijacking. It's a hijacking by the right, I feel, by the right and the left to twist a show into their political agendas. And I really feel that they both missed the mark in this case. This is a show written for everyone. No matter who you are, what situation you are in, this show can appeal to you. It, you can relate to this show you can relate to the people in the show. You might relate to other characters more than uh, some characters, some characters more than other characters because of who you are. And I think that was probably the goal of the show is, you know, and it's okay to go into a show, a brand new IP saying, you know, we, we do want to show a wide variety of people uh, and interact with a wide variety of people that gives us a lot of possible uh, plot points, a lot of options for, for character progression. And we're not, and, and we're not, set, quite frankly, we're not saddled with it with something like Lord of the Rings, which was written in a much different time period. And if you were to go, I don't know, start making elves uh, uh, other races, uh, uh, you know, uh, without explanation, um, yeah, people would, oh, right, they already did that. Yeah. Shit. You see, and there's the, pro therein lies the problem. You are literally changing an IP that is, with the Lord of the Rings, you're literally changing an IP that's been around for how long now? And for, for just, to, just to, to, to appease your own sense of, of political justice within the modern era. And that's not right. That's really not right. But you can take a show like Steven Universe, which is a brand new IP, and you can talk about this stuff and present this stuff in a way that is not shitting on existing IP, that is a way that you want to relate to people in a meaningful way in a new universe. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't mean that to come. <laughs> in a new Steven universe, yeah, sure, we'll go with that. I meant that pun. So I, I'm just absolutely furious about this on both ends because this hijacking of, of other people's work for your own political ends really pisses me off and I've seen it before. So, okay, I'm going to stop now. I'm going to stop now. So, that's my review and rant regarding Steven Universe. Huge Steven Universe fan. If you made it this far into the video, go watch it. You know, even with these spoilers, it, I, and I've deliberately spoiled as little as possible. I kept out as much as possible. So trust me, there's a couple like zingers in there like, wow, I did not see that coming. Yeah, there's a guy, and I honestly, they, they caught me. They caught me, you know, I, I did not know. Oh, oh. Wow. That, that's a real revelation right there. So I, I would recommend Steven Universe to anyone. That's my final verdict, so to speak. So this is a winter mute out.